so good to be back. Thank God for all the places we went, we visited. Uh, some began to ask me, Pastor, did you enjoy yourself? Well, I put on five kilos. At least I feel like I put on five kilos. And also, you can tell I've got a very nice tan. When I left, I was as fair as Jonathan. But now look at me. So I had a good time. I, it was good to have Stephen and Monica with us as well. Pastor Lightman said she has never seen me eat breakfast. Seriously, she has never seen me eat so much from the day she met me. You know, I usually have just a cup of coffee, but there I was just gorging myself. I was a pig every day. Emphasis on every day. I had full breakfast, man. I mean, what they call a full Monty. I had everything loaded, pressed down, shaken together, running over. In fact, everything ran over. And so, you know, I, I had a great time, but I don't know about them whether they had a great time. I'm sure they didn't have a good time. You can tell, ask them whether they had a good time. Sister Monica, I, I have a video of her, but she said if I ever show it, she's going to the church next door. <laughs> so, you know, I got threatened, and so I will not show it. You all didn't know she could jump, huh? You thought she was too heavy, right? Come on. She did, she did jump. And of course, Kumar, when I sent all these pictures to Kumar, Kumar asked me, Master, how come you, you are not there? I said, I what model? I become cameraman. <laughs> Smart thing to do, man. Tell you. Uh, you know, the boat really rocked, especially when they jumped on board. <laughs> no. but we had a great time, we had a great time uh, enjoying seeing all the places together. Okay, now, I'm sure you heard of, you know, this professor of theology and the pastor, they were both talking. And uh, the professor of theology said, you know, every time I stand up to preach, my wife will blow me a kiss. And the pastor said, hey, my wife does the same thing. He says, but you don't understand. When my wife blows me a kiss, K-I-S-S -S means keep it simple, sir. He says, hey, my wife does the same thing, the pastor said. When she blows me the kiss, K-I-S-S -S means keep it short, stupid. <laughs> so I'm going to try and keep it simple, but I don't know whether I can keep it short. <laughs> okay. Uh, this morning, I'd like us to go to James chapter 5. I'm going to start emphasizing a little bit more on the power of prayer, actually, the benefits of prayer. But before I do that, do you, do you really understand what God has done for you? I mean, personally, have you ever thought about what the Lord has done for you? If you read the Bible, you discover that whenever Jesus entered into the life of a person, they were absolutely transformed. They were graced by God. God came into their lives. I mean, you think about the Samaritan woman, right? Uh, she was bad case. I mean, she was really a bad case. But Jesus chose to spend time with her. Now, the Bible says this, that nobody comes into the presence of God except the Spirit brings them. So you sitting in church is actually a divine uh, appointment but it's also a divine privilege. Come on, amen? Every time you come, you must take advantage of every chance to meet with God. Now, the entire sermon may not be, a, 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 be you know, appealing to you, but God can use statements, a sentence, just one. Let there be light, and your whole life can be absolutely transformed. So whenever you come to church, before you come to church, I, I hope and, and that you will pray a prayer. God, speak to me. Come on, amen. Speak to me. Give me one statement because one sentence, the word of God is powerful, able to pierce between bone and marrow, causing people to come alive. It is quickened, which means that it can make us come alive when we feel dead on the inside. God can cause us to come alive. Just by one statement that he makes, everything can change. Come on. If, if, I mean, if we don't understand that, then we don't know how to uh, receive 
what God really wants for us because the only thing that moves God is actually two things, faith and prayer. And when we believe what God has said, that when he speaks, man shall not live, come on, by bread alone, but by every word, not every sentence or every paragraph, but every word that proceeds out of his mouth. When God speaks one word, come, and Peter was able to walk on water. Do you understand that? It's a powerful thing. Go. When the man had leprosy, he just said, go show yourself. And as he went, his leprosy was totally cured. One statement from the mouth of God. You don't have to have the whole message. Just one statement. You know, Jonathan was talking about the message. He preached that funny. All of you, when, when they preach, people begin to say, you know, that message blessed me. It was one point of the message. It was not the entire message, but one point. So I'm praying this morning that God will use at least one statement to cause you to come alive and believe that God has got good things for you. Can I hear an amen? All right, so let's go to James chapter uh, chapter 5, very, very familiar portion of scripture, right? I'm just going to read it from verse 16 through verse 18. Follow along with me. Okay. Do we have it up there? Want to read it, everybody? Let's read it loud. Let's declare it into the atmosphere together. Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Say amen. amen. All right. Elijah was a man with human frailties, just like all of us. But he prayed and received supernatural answers. He actually shut the heavens over the land so there could be no rain for three and a half years. Then he prayed again. And the skies opened up over the land so that the rain came again and produced the harvest. My, my emphasis is basically on verse 17. He was a man just like us. Same human frailties. But he prayed. But he prayed. He was a person just like us with weaknesses just like us. But he prayed. But he prayed and received supernatural Results, but he prayed. See, we, we can read a lot about prayer. I've got books and books of prayer. There's been no end to the writing on books on prayer, on how to pray like this, how to pray like that, how to bind this, how to bind all kinds of books. Jesus taught us very simple prayer. Did, did you know that God wants everything to be simple for us? In a nutshell, what's the gospel like? Well, gospel is very simple, it starts with God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God, God doesn't explain himself, he just declares himself, I am God. And throughout the entire scripture, you find God showing mankind that he needs his creator, that without him, we are nothing, I am nothing without you. And when man does not depend upon God, that's when a lot of problems begin to come in. When he depends upon his own strength, when he depends upon all his uh, uh, intelligence, whatever he has, and man depends on that, mankind becomes a God unto himself, that God's out of the picture. But the whole gospel is, when God comes in, everything begins to change. Come on. Huh? You know, we can talk a lot about prayer, preach on prayer, read on prayer. Do everything about prayer. Prayer is good. We can say to one another, we will pray for you. you know, but unless and until we pray. See, the thing about Elijah was he didn't preach on prayer. He prayed. You don't find one sermon of Elijah on prayer. He just prayed. But Elijah prayed and received supernatural answers. The reason why we need to pray is because we must have supernatural answers. Come on. You don't want supernatural answers. If you can get what man can give you, then you don't need to pray. If you are depending on man to support you, then you don't need to pray. But if you want supernatural answers, come on, amen. So let me uh, as, uh, be a simple, you know, like I said, KIS says, keep it simple and keep it short. So, how many of you would, would really like to, to understand 
God a little bit more. The whole idea of God or God as a person or the realities of, of what we have been talking about, kingdom realities, uh, what heaven is like. Uh, we are not sure. Some people are just not prepared. When you talk about death, they say, Don't, I, I'm talking to Christians. Many Christians are just not prepared to go. They are afraid to go. Why? Because we don't know the realities of life after death. How real it is. How powerful it is. You know, how wonderful it all is. If my father, thank God, the morning he got saved, the Spirit of God began to work in him throughout the day. He was calling the name of Jesus. That night he had a dream of heaven. Now the Holy Spirit, uh, and, and I say this with all reverence, Jesus knows what I'm talking about. He said it is better, so I'm saying that the Holy Spirit is better. Okay? In the sense that what Jesus could not do, the Holy Spirit could do. Jesus said, there are many things that I want to tell you, but I cannot. You're not able to receive them. But when the Holy Spirit comes, then he's going to reveal a lot of things to you. Come on, amen. Now, here are some of the things the Holy Spirit likes to do. There are many things he does, but some of the things he helps us with. Number one, he helps us by showing us what is right and wrong. He convicts of righteousness, convicts of sin. Tell you what is good, what is bad. Isn't that good? So we know exactly in God's eyes, not in people's eyes, but in God's eyes, what is actually good and what is actually bad. The Holy Spirit also comes uh, uh, to, to help us in our prayer life. That's one of the major things that he does. He comes us to help, but we do not know how to pray. So the Holy Spirit comes to help us to pray. That's why he is sent, because we do not know how to pray. So he comes with the purpose of helping us to pray. So if I do not want to pray, he's not going to help me pray and receive the supernatural results he wants to give me. Come on, church. If I refuse to pray, if I say I've got no time to pray, I just play, you know, pray learned responses. He wants to help me to touch heaven and change earth. He wants me to touch heaven and change my business, change my family. He wants to help me to touch, to, you know, to, to really transform things. So whatever I touch, the blessing of the Lord will be upon it. Come on, amen. So the Holy Spirit comes. But one of the things the Holy Spirit comes to do is to open heaven's reality realities to us. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. This is why the scripture says things never discovered or heard of before. We have that there. Next script, the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is why the scripture says things never discovered or heard of before. Things beyond our ability to imagine. See, we, 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 do, we do not have a concept as to who God is. That's why I say to you, when, when we use the word holy, we have this weird feeling because somehow our, uh, we have learned that holiness means something, you know, that, that we cannot understand. So we try to fit into our understanding of it. We go, God is holy and this is holy. But holy, one of the major meanings of holy is God is so different. You cannot know him altogether. The angels that surround his throne keep shouting to one another. It is not a worship service going on at that time. It says they surround the throne in Isaiah chapter 6 and they scream to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty as they surround his throne. Every time they move around his throne, they see a different aspect of God. How can I know God? In the way he wants me to know him. How can I know and be so assured in my heart. That if anything happens you know. I know God is on my side. This is what he says. Alright. Go back to it again. Go back to that scripture again. Alright. Beyond my ability to imagine. These are the many things God has in store for all his lovers. But God now unveils this, these profound realities to us. By the Spirit. Yes, he, uh, he has revealed to us his inmost heart and deepest mystery through the Holy Spirit who constantly explores all things. Now, <clears throat> there's this guy who has been, they've tried to kill him. 
put him in boiling oil, didn't work. So they exiled him to the island of Patmos. Uh, Patmos was something like, you know, like uh, in, in the United States they have, uh, what's that island? Huh? Alcatraz. Uh, for England they had this terrible place called Australia. And, and uh, for, for them, the Roman Empire, they had this place for exiles called Patmos. So John, the beloved, has been, they have tried to kill him, but they're not successful. So they exile him to this place called Patmos. So in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19, he says, I was, on the, I was as an exile on Patmos for the sake of the word of God. Okay, because he preached the word, he loved God's word, he was exiled. All right. But then in verse 20, 19, I am an exile in Patmos. Verse 20, on the Lord's day, which was a Sunday, I was in the spirit. Now, how many of you know that you can be in a very hard place and yet be in the Lord? Now, that can only happen when we pray. I'm talking about the benefits of prayer. John was in the spirit. Although he was in Patmos, he was in the spirit. You can be in the hardest of hardest of places and yet you can be in the Lord. When you are in prayer. And that's where the book of Revelation is birthed. All the things that mankind has been seeking to understand. What the prophets have desired to look into. Uh, is suddenly revealed to the man as he is in the spirit of God. As he is in prayer. God reveals these things to him. So we thank God. You and I should thank God. We know the end of life. We are winners. Come on. The church is triumphant. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. He triumphant. The devil will be caught and chained forever. We win at the end of the day. How did this revelation come? It didn't come by him being on Patmos, cursing the day he was born and saying, this is a terrible place for me to live in. He, he, he was in prayer and the spirit of God was with him. Come on, church. So it doesn't matter where you are, you need to understand, you know, you don't have to succumb to the, your surroundings. You can be on top of it. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, how many of you would like to receive more of the miraculous in your life? I mean, to see more things happen. I mean, I'm talking about the miraculous in your life. James talks about it. James chapter 4, verse 3. Put that scripture up. Elijah was a man of like passions, but he prayed. Now here we have all the time you don't obtain what you want because what? You won't ask God for it. You use it as a last resort rather than the very first thing you should do. What does Paul say? He says, in everything, come on. Give thanks in everything by prayer. Talk about that in just a moment. But we don't ask. And we are supposed, this is a privilege given to us. Communion is but an entrance into the throne room of God where we can talk to God continuously. Pray constantly. Pray without ceasing. Written by a man who spent his time in prison most of his life. Pray without ceasing. Constantly be in an attitude of prayer that you could lift your heart up to God anytime. Come on. We have not because we ask not. Now, the, God wants to perform greater things for us. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Next scripture. Is there any sick among you? Ask the elders of the church to come and pray over the sick and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will Heal the sick and the Lord will raise them up. If they've committed sins, they will be forgiven. Now, all these comes as an answer to prayer. When we pray, the miraculous begins to come in. Come on, amen. Huh? Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask that you might receive. Why do we pray? We pray so that we can receive. And we are praying to God. So we must have God results. I've always prayed this prayer. 
God, I want to see God results. I don't want it to be just ordinary man kind of results where we worked up something. I want God results. I want the miraculous because we believe that our God is alive. You must believe for the miraculous. That's, that's why we are believers. We are Christians. We are people of the faith. We believe that our God can do exceedingly, come on, talk to me, abundantly, above all that we can ask or imagine. I mean, if we really believe, see, we can quote scripture, but Elijah prayed, but he prayed, and he obtained supernatural answers. But he begins with, he was a man just like us. <coughs> just like us. And yet he obtained supernatural. Why is James saying this? You know, James, uh, according to tradition, when he died, they had to break his knees in order to put him in a coffin. Because he knelt so much in prayer. He had knelt down until his knees, they say, were like camel uh, humps kind of thing. Right? He could not walk properly. He walked bent because he had uh, camel knees. So, <clears throat> now here, here he is talking about receiving the miraculous. Now, do you know that living a worry-free life is a divine right given to us believers? Do you know that? A worry-free life. So we have that scripture. We all know that scripture. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 7. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated throughout each day, offering your faithful requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell Him every detail of your life. Then God's, talk to me, wonderful peace that transcends human understanding. Now we're talking about what govern your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We're talking about the miraculous. We are talking about prayer that benefits us. Prayer, can I say this? Prayer does not benefit God. God does not need us a prayer in order to feel bigger or greater. But we need answers from God. We need things that transcends human understanding. Where people cannot understand how it is we are going through hell and yet our heads are held high. How is it that you can be chained with, with in a sewer, with, you know, sewer coming right up to your waist, chained, beaten badly, and yet singing at midnight? That is not human. But when you understand the man who wrote that, and who wrote this, practice this. But he prayed. See, Paul didn't talk about prayer. He's talking about an experience. Uh, at the end of the month, I'll be going and ministering in, in the Philippines Theological Seminary. I do not have the authority to teach unless I first do. Jesus began to do and to teach. Paul began to do and then to teach. He didn't want to just teach on prayer. He said, listen, it is possible to have the peace of God that transcends human understanding governing your heart and mind. How do I know this? Because I was in prison and the peace of God was on my mind and on my heart. We could sing to the Lord, man. We were beaten, we were in chains, and we could sing. So my friends, listen, this is God's divine right given to us. It's a privilege. You can, no, no wonder somebody said, why, why pray when you can worry? Huh? Why pray when you can worry? So some people just, you know, they love to worry. Huh? Because if they don't have anything to worry about, then their life is boring. But why? And, and this is your right, this is my right, given to me. You don't have to live like this. You don't have to live under anxiety and, and you know, always thinking about what's going to happen next in every detail of your life. I surrender all. 
Excuse me, excuse me. I surrender all to you. Come on, amen. Would you like to get stronger in the Lord? Come on. Stronger in faith, stronger in your prayer life. How many of you like that? Amen. Very often when I go and speak, you know, in any country where we go and speak, whether India, Philippines, wherever we are, uh, people come up, and many of them will always say, Pastor, pray for me, especially the Christians, that I will become stronger in my faith. I, I want to be stronger in my faith. And, and I like what James wrote when he talked about Elijah. He starts by saying, he was just like us, man. He was an ordinary man. He was not some superman. Okay? He was not some superman. Now, think about this for a while. The Apostle Paul. God noticed him right at the beginning by saying this. Ananias, go find this guy by the name of Saul. He's in a house on the street called Strain. Behold, he is praying. That's how Paul's entire journey begins. Why he was chosen above the others? Because he found him praying. The thing that caught God's attention was the man was now praying and he was a, you know, he was a, a very religious person learned under the greatest teacher in, in Israel called Gamaliel and yet all the prayers that he had learned all his life did not matter at all because it was all learned prayers. Now for the first time, he is blind and he, he has been thrown off his high horse and he's just walking around praying. What kind of prayers did he pray? It's not recorded, but I'm sure they were sad, bitter, angry, empty prayers. How could I do such a thing? God, please, whoever you are, I don't know you, but I would really like to know you. Would you have, I have been thinking that I knew you, I didn't know you, help me to know you. I mean, it was just desperate prayers, and God loved those prayers. And that man who was a sinner one day, the next day, he now becomes an apostle. Go tell him that I'm going to call him to be an apostle. A sinful man. So you see, we, we've got no reason to say, I don't qualify. I'm not good enough. All those that received miraculous answers were people that did not re deserve to have miraculous answers. But God gave them to him anyway. But now we want to grow strong, amen? Listen to what Jude says, Jude 1 20. But you, I like this translation. By the way, in case you're wondering what translation I'm reading from, it's called the Passion Translation, okay? But you, my delightful loved friends, <clears throat> constantly and progressively this, this uh, uh, morning, Pastor Stefan was sharing on the process that we have to go through in order to reach the kind of destiny God has for us. Progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith. How? By praying through the Holy Spirit. How can I build myself up? How can I grow? I, I wish I could lay hands on you and immediately you start growing in faith. It cannot happen that way. Paul, the, the writer Jude is writing to every believer. And he's saying, if you guys really want to grow, man, if you really want to grow, you've got to constantly, progressively, I pray that your prayers have changed over the years. I pray that your prayers, I hope, I hope to God, that over the years you have noticed that there's been a change in the way you pray. Because if there's no change in the way we have prayed, then we are not progressing. We are stuck. God needs to cause us to change in the way we pray. And sometimes the way we change is when we begin to have nothing that we can say anymore. Except that God, you've got to really help me out with this one. One of the greatest prayers is to be able to come to a place where we can honestly... Do you know when we were singing that song this morning, we sang it in the pre-service. I mean, I felt such a privilege to be able to surrender all to God. You know what a privilege it is? What an honor, what a safe... Uh, save God there is when we present all to God. We know that no matter who we are, how bad we are, no matter what we feel about ourselves, how good it is to fall into the hands of a compassionate God. Amen. Aren't you glad you have that God as your God? He's such a good God, isn't he? That we can come as we are and give ourselves to him. And the more we keep praying, it says, 
Praying every moment in the spirit. Praying every moment in the spirit. Okay. How about desiring God's favor? Do you desire God's favor on your life? Want God to affirm you. To say that I'm happy with you. Luke chapter 3 verse 21, 22. One day Jesus came to be baptized along with all the others. This is the Passion Translation. He was consumed with the spirit of prayer. He was consumed with the spirit of prayer. The heavenly realm ripped open above him. The Holy Spirit descended from heaven in a visible, tangible form as of a dove, landed on him. Then God's voice was heard, saying, My son, you are my beloved one. Through you, I am fulfilled. Now you understand why the heavens were ripped open. Why the voice was heard. Because he was consumed with the spirit of prayer. Come on, church. This morning, I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you to go a little step further. Pray a little bit more. Pray a little bit more earnestly. Just a simple prayer. You don't have to have fine words. God's not interested in the vocabulary. He's not interested in the grammar we have. He's looking at our hearts and the way our heart cries out to him. Simple, simple little prayers mean a lot to God. God loves the sound of our voices. Come on. He loves us when we talk to him in as simple a form as possible. And God will grant his favor over our lives. Last of all, how many of you want to see your loved ones find God's forgiveness? Some may disagree with my theology. I am absolutely convinced that we must preach to every person. Okay? I believe that we must share the gospel as far as we can to every person possible. But I also believe that when we get saved, God can do a tremendous work if we cover them with our prayers. How many of you believe that Jesus hears, I mean God hears Jesus' prayers? You believe God hears Jesus' prayers? Do you believe that he prayed the right prayer? He prayed always according to God's will? Now here he is in Luke 23 verse 34. Listen to this one. Now this is very powerful. When I read it, I thought, my goodness, I never saw this before. While they were nailing Jesus to the cross, he prayed over and over. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you... You and your household, right? There was no qualification for the family. There was just a qualification for him. If you will believe in Jesus Christ, if you will know what it means to be a child of God, walk with him, talk with him, bringing your family into that whole picture, into the covering of your prayers, they shall be saved. That was what he did when he got <clears throat> Noah who walked with God. Remember Noah? Noah walked with God. Noah was the only one whose life pleased the Lord. Doesn't talk about Noah's wife. Doesn't talk about the children. How they behaved. All those things didn't really matter. What mattered was there was somebody. The whole world was wicked constantly. They, now definitely the surroundings had a say on the children's life. It definitely had a take on their lives. They were definitely affected. As young people are definitely affected by everything that's happening. But there was somebody who walked with God. Walk with somebody means you simply have a relationship with God. And Noah was the one who walked with God. And God found him to be perfect in that sense. And because he walked with God, God said, now you and your household, your wife, your children, all of them get into the ark. Your prayers are powerful. Walk with God. She was a prostitute. 
But because she put her faith in the God that the Jews serve, as long as you bring them into your household, whether they believed in them or not, did not matter. Uh, what mattered was she was able to convince them to somehow just come into the house, come into the house. I will put a red cord on the outside. I will take the responsibility for your salvation. And because she brought them into the house and placed the cord over the house, she took the responsibility. Church, we've got the responsibility of bringing our family. Do we pray for them? I mean, really pray for them. I thank God my brother prayed for us for six years. Every year he prayed, we got from bad to worse. We just got bad. And from bad to better. And worse. And worse. And he kept on praying. Come back and talk to us. You guys are going to go to hell. My brother didn't have a message of grace. He just told us, but it was the most gracious message. Wonders with love, with tears. You guys are going to go to hell. Didn't believe him. Kept praying and make fun of the. Every time he came back, we will make fun of him. But he kept on praying. Six years. And then suddenly, bam, a few of us got saved one day. Some got saved while they went clang. We were in Penang, you know, from family members away from each other. Yet within the space of a few weeks, all got saved. Bam. Miracles can happen overnight. Amen. From a prison cell to the palace. That's what Joseph experienced overnight. But constantly walk with God. Talk with Him. If we want to see, see when Jesus prayed, forgive them they, over and over. Just say, Father, forgive them. Why did He say it over and over again? Constantly reminding you. Some people say, oh, I pray for them once enough. No, no, no. That's, that's stupid faith. Faith is simply wanting to move on and on. Don't be presumptuous. Don't say I prayed for them last time only one prayer. You know, people tell me I must pray only once. If I pray again and again, that means I, I don't have faith. Rubbish. Jesus was the one who had the greatest faith in God. But he prayed over and over and over again. In the days of his flesh, with strong crying. In the garden of Gethsemane, three times he prayed the same prayer. Pray again and again and again and again. Keep praying on and on. Don't give up because of what you see in the natural. If my brother had seen what he had seen in the natural and, and made a decision in the natural, he would have given up. We got so bad. But I thank God he kept looking to God. He believed that you and your household shall be saved. Amen. And that can only happen when we pray, church. So I want to encourage you, please, no matter what you do, every day pray for your loved ones. Pray for them. Nothing is impossible with God. We want to see miracles happen. We want to see healing in our bodies. Pray. My responsibility is to pray. God's responsibility is to supply the miraculous answers. But Elijah prayed. But he prayed. And he received supernatural answers. I want to see that. Come on, amen. How about you? If you'd like that to happen in your life, stand with me this morning. <clears throat> ah, hallelujah.